regarding, you know, Trudeau's Supreme Court process, you know, a lot of the media is focusing on the bilingual component, and it's predictable. English media. The English media in Canada never misses an opportunity to start an English-French battle. It's like, you know, it's as, it's as Canadian as, as hockey is. And in a large extent, it is hockey, right? It's the Leafs versus the Habs. It's English versus the French. It's the fundamental defining point of the country, is this conflict between the Angles and the Franks. Which is why we... It might be why we like Monty Python so much. I will insult you a second time! But... Not only do I not have a problem with this bilingual requirement that the media is focusing so hard, so, so strongly on, but I would actually insist upon it and argue that those arguing otherwise are just, like, it's, it's willful stupidity. Like, you're really just being stupid. To be a Supreme Court justice in Canada means that you have to hear cases from Quebec, which means that you need to do research in... In, in Quebec law, which is written in French, because it's a civil law, it's a different legal system. It is a functional job requirement to do the research, to hear the cases. I mean, you know, you, you get somebody in front of you and they only speak French, you got to be able to understand what they say. Okay, not through a translator, but in the vernacular. Because that person that's standing in front of you, whether you angle a phone out in Calgary, wants to accept it or not, okay, that person standing in front of the judge has a right to justice. And that right to justice is not possible if the judges have to go through a convoluted translation process just to understand what they're saying. You know, they got to translate it and then they got to send it to committee to ensure that the translation is correct. While the, you know... While the person that's just who is seeking justice is standing in front of you, exasperated. I've I've heard people argue that so long as there's a plurality, you know, so long as you have five. So if you're French, you only have access to the to the opinions of five justices. That's a tiered justice system, and you're standing up there and. It, it, it's a chauvinism, right? It's, it's a supremacism. You're saying that these inferior francophones are not entitled to the same level of justice, and you don't even realize it. No. Okay. The truth is that you simply can't do this job if you don't speak French. And if you don't realize that, then you don't understand what the job is. And you should probably just shut the fuck up. It's not identity politics. And it's not Franco-centric. It really is a basic job requirement. And it's long past due. That it's formally enforced. And no, just, just stop. In fact, it's actually really, really outrageous for you to stand there as an Anglophone Canadian and claim that a Francophone Canadian is not entitled to justice in their native language. How would you feel about going up against a court that only speaks French and only understands civil law? You'd feel like you were living in a foreign country. By making the arguments that you're making, you are implying that the French citizens in this country are inferior, or that they have some obligation. Like it's it's not even a question of language. Quebec uses a different legal system. Are you gonna are you gonna study francophone civil law in English? It's impossible. It, it, it's an, it, it's it's insane. It's a, it, like completely incoherent. And so this is not a serious debate. 
and people that present it as a debate are not serious people. And it's really just kind of depressing, okay, that there are people out there that, that don't see it that way, that are so trapped in this backwards concept of Canada as an English nation, which it never was and is never going to be.